Hey guys, welcome to an episode I've wanted to do for a while, and it is called Radiusing a Neck. Radiusing a Neck. Now, most of us start off building guitars. We figure out we're going to get a, a cheap cigar box. Some guitar boxes are way better than others, right? Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> the market's kind of funny. You really can get on the internet and find a guitar that plays uh, that's not one of these for a hundred bucks. So there's not a lot of room in these unless you get really good at it. But we got a single board neck on a cheap box, and at some point we decide, oh, I want to go on to a better box. A Camacho 60 by 6s is what I was known for. They're thick and durable, and you can mount stuff to it. They don't fall apart. Those are the ones that I put on the road with artists. So, you start off with something like this. Single board, grooves in it for frets. This isn't going to take very heavy strings, that's for sure. And at some point we get into stuff like this. We're putting a heel board, beefing up with another piece of wood, but the neck is still flat. Um... Flat guitar necks kind of were meant for Dobros, a lap guitar, lap steels where this part sits on your lap, not rounded off where it rolls back and forth. But at some point, you're going to get into, like, the guitar I'm building now, which is, we're still on Wayne's oversized license plate, this one, 1953 from Michigan. We're going to put some heavy strings. So I'm starting to get into double boards, and this one is going to have a heel too. So when you're playing something like this, the square neck becomes really difficult. And you're going to want to get into radiusing the neck. In other words, taking it from square to rounded. And this is how most of your uh, modern guitars are. Now, in terms of difficulty... The things we start fearing most when we start building guitars is fretting, then, oh yeah, scarf joints, cutting this angle and, and building headstocks that are wider than one board width. I'm flipping back and forth here. Yeah, that stuff's challenging, but now when you get into radiusing necks, there's a lot going on and it seems to be overwhelming. We're going to go through how to do one of these and... There is going to be a lot to this one because it's a little bit more than running a router up and down here. we got to figure out, am I going to put a heel board on? Where is the nut? Where is the fretboard going to end? Where does everything go in the body? How much needs to stick out of the body, if any? There's a lot to figure out. So I'm going to walk you through step by step um, and show you how to measure everything out. If you get to the point where you're radius, radiusing next, for the exact same kind of box, you can just build templates, you know uh, where everything is. But anytime you change, and that was one of the hard parts about cigar box guitars until I started going exclusively with these Camacho 60 by 6 boxes, it seemed every box was different. I had to figure out the intonation, where, where the bridge goes, all that. We're still going to have to do that with this one and stay with it. This is going to be... A long episode but by the end of the episode you're going to be able to know how to do these and have them work out and turn out and look good and be functional so that said the goal here is we are going to put this headstock on this neck blank like so once we get that glued on, then we're going to figure out heel board, where everything goes in the box. And again, we'll measure this out. I'll do this step by step for you. Get ready to take some screenshots, and that way you'll never forget. That said, let's get to the bench. Okay, I got an idea. Let's just get a router with a half inch roundover bit on it and call it a day, right? No, wrong. That's ultimately what we'll do, by the way, but there's a lot of little things to figure out ahead of time. So let's start, like I said, with this guitar. We made this box here, and I think I'm going to burn through a lot of I cards here, but this box right here 
was made an episode here, up there, right about now. And it's got a real simple dovetail joint. It looks good. It's doweled, and we also put these pillar blocks in to hold the license plate. We're going to ultimately dowel those too, but this box will hold this license plate. Now, there are kit frames that you can use to use regular size plates. Now, notice Mississippi in 1932 on their truck plates had gone to the size of dimension we're typical to, but same year Mississippi another plate is much bigger so when you're building these boxes and they're fitting different stuff there's all kinds of things to think about like where's the bridge going to be here where's the neck going to exit the box is there a tailpiece you know I was running my tailpiece because my string keepers come through there and come up to the bridge so there's a lot of different things to think about about the where the radius part of your neck is going to start and end. So let's take a look at this mess I got going on. I took two pieces of wood, glued them together after I measured out carefully what ultimately I think is going to need to happen. Let's get the clamps off of here. Okay, this is the part where you want to pay attention. Again, this is a board, two boards glued up together, and this, the overall length of the two put together is 43 inches 43 inches why 43 inches well there was a number of things to consider here um, and they all relate to the box and ultimately to the license plate that goes on the box now you've got to figure out on the box where do I want my pickup do I want it away from the holes that hold the plate on? Do I want it covering something that is least conspicuous? So I leave the plates, the, the let's say this is a personalized plate, and where do I want everything to line up? So say I want my bridge right here. That means my nut has to be on a 25 and a half scale guitar, which is what I do all my guitars in the center of that would take me out here you see my hand that's where the nut will be then the headstock has to go on to that and then also I am going to run string keepers so I need about two and a half inches ultimately two but I use two and a half inches here so I need two and a half here the length of the box the length of the nut and what I need to carry on to the headstock so let's mark this up. Okay, you will notice that when I'm doing layout of necks and stuff, I will use inches instead of the metric system, and that's one of the few times. But I've got the end here. It's not perfectly flat, so I'm going to want to flush that. So I'm going to make a mark here at two and a half inches. I'm also going to say that this is the top. Okay. Now I'm going to take and do align with my square and I'm going to drop that down I'm going to continue those marks on the side so I'm going to line that up with the end of the box right there okay now I'm going to want to know how wide the box is the thickness of the box and so I'm going to turn this over and I am going to run my square, that mark, right there. I'm going to put that even with the end of the box. Now, I can see over here that I am making a mark where the box ends on the inside. You see that there? I'm going to mark that there. Now, sometimes I notch this out. Sometimes I don't. In this case, I'm going to have another board. The heel board will end right here. And instead of exiting the box like the other two boards, it will be pinned right down here. I hope my camera's set up. So anyway, I've got that sitting there. Now I'm going to go to the front of the box. 
and make sure that I'm in the right spot. I don't want the seam here pointed up. So I'm going to mark that there and I'm going to mark the same deal on the front where the inside of the box wall is and where the outside is like so. I'm going to carry those marks up here like so and then we'll transfer those to the top as well so we can see what's happening. So, got one more to do here. So, this will be, this part right here, will be the top of String Keepers SK back box front box this is the body or the box itself okay now we decided that we wanted to lay the box out for the plate on the box and everything I think I want the bridge right here so if I'm going to put the bridge right there I line up everything back of the box front of the box all the wall thickness and I'm gonna make a mark right here see that we're gonna mark this bridge this is where the bridge is gonna go okay this is starting to become pretty complicated huh the whole thing is we're trying to figure out where the heel board is gonna go and now we're going to put the fretboard on and count where we want everything to end, which is the fretboard is going to end just past where the box starts. All right. I did a couple of episodes, a real good one on scale and intonation. It's up there with that eyes click. And just remember, when you get to the end of the video where I'm doing my spiel and cracking final jokes, just hover up above where that eye is popping up and you can get the playlist. But we're going to put this bridge, this rolling roller bridge right here. And we know from measuring scale and intonation that if my bridge is here and it's 25 and a half scale, I'm going to need to place the 12th fret equidistant between the nut and the bridge halfway through that measurement is really important so I've got my 25 and a half scale okay and so halfway there is going to be wherever this lands so we're going to figure out the nut needs to be way up here can you see way up here? So I'm going to make a mark here. That's where the back of the nut is going to be. So I'm going to make a mark here. Okay. Like so. Now, I've got this rosewood fretboard. It's 25 and a half scale. So I'm going to make this easy on myself. I'm going to lay it on here. And I'm going to count down. To the 12th fret 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 I'm going to make a mark right here now I like the heel to start just past the 14th fret because when you're using a slide like this if you've got the heel board at the 12th fret it's going to start getting in your way so I'll do about halfway between the 12th and the 14th fret. So I'm going to make a mark here, like so, and we're going to label that one 12, and then we'll make a mark here and label this one 14 and a half. Okay? So my heel board is going to end on this guitar, it's not going to exit out the back because this is thick enough to get put my string keepers in and you'll see that when I get to it I don't want to add another thickness of board so I'm going to take 
from the 14th and a half fret, which isn't a fret at all, but we're going to make that mark there. I'm going to bring it like so. And this is the start of heel board. Now, we know because I want to end it inside the box, like so, and this inner mark is inside the box, like so, I am going to make this mark here. And the measurement between the 14th fret, 14th and a half fret, which is here, and this mark here is where my heel board is going to be, and that means the 45 I use on my heel board before it flattens out up here is going to start there, and the heel board is going to end there. Good. So, what does that have to do with anything? Well, if my heel board is going to start right here, my routing needs to take place between where the heel board ends right here and this right here. This is the part we want a radius. You with me? Okay, stick with me here. Using my scarf joint jig, which I did an episode about, and I'll give you a link to right up there right about now. Oh my, the mistakes that I had made before I started using this kind of stuff. Anyway, I use the scarf joint jig to cut this 15 degree angle on the chop saw and did the same thing with a piece of blue Mahoe wood that I had run through a planer to get the right size thickness so it wouldn't be too thick when I started off with stock this thick and I did an episode about that and how to make this little gauge. But anyway, I took my neck template and cut out the piece of blue Mahoe wood and now I'm going to sit it right up here and when I lay my fretboard up here, it's going to tell me once I figure out where the nut is, like so, how everything is going to line up. So that'll sit back just a little bit, like so. My nut will sit here and everything else will come together as far as the measurements. Okay, I have a handy little gadget here that is the width of the neck board and I can put a mark in the center and I actually use this for string spacing but I can mark it wherever I want like that just by lining up the edges I'm doing a mark like that I also mark off the headstock top and bottom to find the center so the idea here is is I really don't have to find the center on this one I just have to pull the headstock up to a point where this is nice and level. I can't have it uh, laying one way or the other because then it, it will throw up the fingerboard or the fingerboard will have a gap. So it's going to go right to there. Now I've told you guys I like making sure that rather than just having a glue surface here and having this match up, that I do perpendicular rods so the force pulling on the neck is constrained by something blocking it from just pulling up this way. It's actually stopping it from sliding back and forth. So I take my handy but worn pattern and I just put this on here and drill myself three holes wherever I want them to rod this. Once those holes are drilled, then I'm going to glue this up and leave it sit. 
All right, there's our triangular pattern. We're gonna drill these out just the right size for this doweling. Now, we're not going to drill these out just yet into the neck. We're just gonna draw these out here, drill them out, and then once the neck is set and glued up and the glue is starting to dry and we've got everything clamped, then we will drill the rest of the way through and put our dowel in. If you don't do that, it's gonna drift all over the place. Okay, we've got our glue on where it's just a tad bit tacky, but everything's going to want to try and creep depending on how you put your clamps on. So we've got this one hole here drilled, and we're going to put the dowel in and work it down in there. Once we get this lined up, everything won't creep this way. It might try and turn this way, but it's not going to try and creep down. And that's what we want. So we'll get this pounded in and cut off and smoothed off and then clamp the thing up. All right, there we go. We're going to let this sit for a little bit because once this is down, our measurements all line up and we can get to work on rounding over the neck. Okay, we are literally waiting for glue to dry on the headstock. In the interim, we have marked out, we've found all of our marks where uh, the 12th fret goes on this fretboard, where the fretboard sits on the top of the guitar, where the bridge lines up on the license plate, um, where the heel is going to come on to the bottom of the neck at about the 14th and a half fret, how much is going to stick out of the front of the box, and how long the heel board needs to be to be stopping on the inside wall of the back of the box. And then we've measured all this out and put the stop block right here. So when it comes time to take this outside, we just simply put our router base against that stop block right there, crank it on, run it down, take it to the other side, and come back. And that stop block will put it right where it needs to be, and the heel board will meet the radius that we've cut right there. Once the glue dries, we'll take this outside and finally use our router to round off the bottom of the neck. Okay, before I forget, let's talk about the tool we're going to use. This is a router. Um, it holds a number of, any number of variations of bits that will put edges on things, decorative patterns. But we are, what we are going to use is called a roundover bit. Uh, you can buy a set of these fairly economically. This one has quarter, three-eighths, and half-inch. And what happens is you mount the bit here. Um, you can adjust the router up and down using this thing, but you want the top edge of the bit to be flush with the base. And then what happens is there's this little bearing here and when you start the router and push the router into the wood, it will cut away whatever is in the way until the bearing hits the base of the wood. So this is something that you could bullnose countertops with to make that rounded edge. So if you have a one inch piece of wood or slightly less than that, doing both sides makes it pretty much round. Now when you're using one of these, uh, rather than just going blindly, if you have a starting point that you've measured from the center of the bearing here to the edge, and you put a stop block there, when you go in with the router, the router base will start at the stop block. It won't let it go back any, and it will start right where you want. Now, 
this won't get all the way across the bottom of the uh, neck board, the bottom neck board, so I'll use a rasp that will make short work of what the router does not get to. But again, basically, you just set this on the base against your stop block, fire it up, and just move it, pull it towards you on one side of the neck. If you're looking at the bottom of the neck, the left side, you'll be pulling it towards you. On the other side, you'll be pushing it away from you. If you start fighting the way that the router bit is turning, then it jumps all over the place and gouges everything. But again, that bearing hitting the bottom of the board, if there's anything beyond this, will keep everything where this is the only part that gets cut. Now let's get outside and I've got everything set up and we'll finally get to work. Okay, let's take our clamps off. And one last time, we've measured out carefully where the heel board will fit. We put some marks there and put this stop block right here. So when we come in and move the router this way up to here, we can't get past where the rounded off part of the neck will fit into the heel board. Now, again, work with the spinning rotation. That means we come this way here and go that way here. Okay, now the rest of it will be pretty easy. I've got a couple different scrapers that will fit the radius once I get it knocked down uh, with the rasp. And you just kind of go along and work it. And in a couple of thicknesses of scrapers, once it's rounded off, and a rasp. <laughs> Alright guys, I am eating a lot of sawdust, but that neck is nice and smooth and it's like a baseball bat and the heel board matches up and the best thing about it is it matches up with the box and that is what we want. I still have all my fingers, of course I survived the Anadarko Basin oil and gas fields without losing my fingers, so I don't want to do it here. But yeah, sorry it took so long. Sorry, not sorry. You've got everything you need to do to figure things out um, because nothing is worse than going through all this work and having it come together poorly in the end. This is going to be a good, beefy, sturdy guitar, kind of like the likes of old number 12. Hey, Troy Murrah. I'm going to give you guys a link down below. If you don't know who restaurant is, you sure need to. That said, now you can build your own baseball bat next. And I'm sure glad you all got to see me today. I'll see you next time when we start looking at, I don't know, I might drag this 
out for years and years and years. <laughs> now, we will see you next time. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you have not. See ya!